How to discipline a cat to stop scratching and biting. Hey, you ever feel like your cat is turning your home into a battleground? I totally get it. Maybe your furniture looks like it's been through a war, your arms are covered in scratches, and those surprise bites during playtime are getting old. It's super frustrating, right? You adore your furry friend, but sometimes their behavior can be just too much. You're not alone in this, trust me. We've all had those moments of wondering what on earth we're doing wrong. The good news? You can help your cat learn better habits. I'm here to share some tips and tricks to guide them towards being the sweet, well-behaved kitty you know they can be. Ready to bring some peace back into your home? Let's get right into it. Understanding why cats do this is the first step to managing and changing their behavior. First off, cats are natural hunters and playtime often mimics hunting behavior. When your cat scratches and bites during play, they're not trying to hurt you, they're just getting their hunt on. This behavior is especially common in kittens and young cats who are full of energy. It's their way of practicing those hunting skills they'd need in the wild. So when you dangle that feather toy, they're imagining it's a bird they need to catch. Then there's petting aggression. Ever noticed your cat getting a bit too feisty after a petting session? Some cats can become overstimulated if petted for too long. This overstimulation can lead to sudden biting or scratching as their way of saying, hey, that's enough. Each cat has its own threshold for how much petting they can handle, and some might reach their limit faster than others. Pay attention to their body language. Dilated pupils, a twitching tail, or ears going back are signs they're getting overstimulated. Just like us, cats can get bored or frustrated, especially if they're not getting enough mental and physical stimulation. A bored cat might start scratching furniture or biting to release pent-up energy or express their frustration. They need ways to burn off that excess energy, and sometimes your couch or your arm ends up being the target. Providing plenty of toys and regular play sessions can help reduce this type of behavior. Sometimes, scratching and biting are your cat's way of communicating. If they want you to stop doing something, they might give you a nip or a scratch as a clear signal. It's their way of setting boundaries. For instance, if you're petting them in a spot they don't like, or if they're feeling cornered and want some space, they might use their claws or teeth to make their point. It's important to learn and respect these signals to maintain a harmonious relationship with your kitty. Understanding these behaviors helps you see things from your cat's perspective. Remember, they're not being bad, they're just being cats. Knowing why they act this way makes it easier to address the problem. All right, now that we know why your cat might be scratching and biting, let's look at some preventive measures to help curb these behaviors. These tips will make your home more cat-friendly and keep those claws and teeth in check. First, let's talk about claw management. Regular claw trimming is a game changer. Trimming your cat's claws regularly can significantly reduce the damage caused by scratching. Use proper claw clippers and handle your cat gently to avoid stress. If you're unsure how to do it, your vet can show you the ropes. Keeping those claws trimmed not only saves your furniture, but also makes your cat more comfortable. Another great option is soft claws. These are tiny, soft covers that you glue onto your cat's claws. They prevent sharp scratching and can be a good solution if your cat is particularly destructive. They usually last a few weeks before needing to be replaced. It's a painless and effective way to protect your home from claw damage. Now, on to scratching alternatives. Cats need to scratch. It's just part of being a cat. So give them something they can really dig into. Place multiple scratching posts around your home. Experiment with different materials like sisal, carpet, and cardboard to see what your cat prefers. Make sure they are sturdy and tall enough for a good stretch. The more appealing the post, the less likely they'll be to scratch your furniture. Investing in cat furniture is another smart move. Cat trees or scratching pads not only give your cat a place to scratch, but also provide climbing and hiding spots, which are great for their physical and mental health. Cats love to perch up high and observe their surroundings, so a good cat tree can keep them entertained and happy. Let's not forget about environmental enrichment. Keeping your cat engaged with a variety of toys is crucial. Interactive toys, puzzle feeders, and even simple things like a ball of yarn can keep your cat occupied. Rotate toys regularly to keep things interesting. Boredom is a big trigger for destructive behavior, so keeping their environment stimulating is key. Playtime is another important aspect. 
Play with your cat in short sessions multiple times a day. This helps burn off excess energy and reduces the likelihood of aggressive behavior. Use toys like wands, laser pointers, or anything that mimics prey to get them moving. A tired cat is a well-behaved cat. By incorporating these preventive measures, you'll create a more stimulating environment for your cat, reducing the chances of unwanted scratching and biting. Remember, a happy and engaged cat is less likely to act out. Plus, these activities strengthen the bond between you and your furry friend. It's a win-win. All right, now that we've set up some preventive measures, let's chat about how to train your cat to behave better. Think of this as gently guiding your cat towards good behavior. Here's how you can do it. First off, let's dive into positive reinforcement. This is all about rewarding good behavior. When your cat uses a scratching post or plays without biting, give them a treat, some praise, or a gentle pet. Positive reinforcement is like saying, good job. It helps them understand that they did something right. Every time they choose the scratching post over your couch or play nicely without using their teeth, let them know they've made the right choice. Have you ever heard of clicker training? It's super cool and very effective. Every time your cat does something good, click the clicker and give them a treat. It helps them connect the dots between the click, the treat, and their good behavior. Over time, they'll start to understand that the click means they did something awesome. Now, let's talk about redirecting their attention. If your cat starts to scratch or bite you, grab a toy and redirect their attention. Toys like wands, laser pointers, or automated toys can work wonders. It not only stops the unwanted behavior, but also gives them something fun to focus on. It's all about channeling that energy into something positive. Distraction techniques can also be really helpful. When you see your cat about to scratch or bite, distract them with a toy or make a gentle noise like a soft clap. This can help break their focus and prevent the behavior from continuing. The key is to catch them in the act and gently steer them in a different direction. Teaching boundaries is another important aspect. If your cat gets too rough during play, stop the interaction and walk away. Ignore them for a few minutes. It's like saying, playtime's over because you got too rough. They'll start to get the hint that biting and scratching ends the fun. Consistency is key here. Over time, they'll learn to play more gently. Using verbal cues can also help. Use a firm but gentle no or ouch when your cat scratches or bites. Keep your tone consistent so they learn that this sound means they need to stop what they're doing. It's a simple but effective way to communicate with your cat. By using these friendly and gentle training techniques, you'll help your cat understand what's okay and what's not, making your relationship with them even better. But if your cat's still being a bit of a wild child, no worries, there are some ways to manage and reduce their aggressive behavior. Remember, patience is key. First off, let's talk about avoiding punishment. This one's super important. Never hit, shout at, or chase your cat. Physical punishment doesn't work and can actually make things worse. It can lead to fear, anxiety, and more aggression. Instead, stay calm and composed. When your cat acts out, they're often reacting to something that's bothering them, and punishment only adds to their stress. Instead, focus on understanding and addressing the underlying causes of their behavior. If your cat bites or scratches, don't pull away quickly. This might trigger their hunting instincts and make them want to bite or scratch even more. Instead, freeze and stay still. This helps them realize that the fun stops when they get too rough. Pulling away quickly can sometimes mimic the movements of prey, making them more excited and likely to continue their behavior. By staying calm and still, you show them that their rough play ends the interaction. Now, let's understand overstimulation. Some cats love being petted, but only up to a point. Learn to recognize when your cat has had enough. Signs like dilated pupils, tail twitching, or ears flattening mean it's time to stop. Stop petting before they get to this point to avoid sudden bites or scratches. Every cat has a different threshold, and it's important to pay attention to these signals. It's like they have a petting meter, and once it's full, they need a break. Knowing your cat's limits helps prevent those unexpected bites and scratches. If you're worried about overstimulating your cat, set a timer for your petting sessions. Start with short periods and gradually increase the time as your cat becomes more comfortable. 
This helps them get used to longer petting sessions without getting overstimulated. Over time, you can build up their tolerance, but always watch for signs that they've had enough. Creating safe spaces is also crucial. Designate specific areas in your home where your cat can play and release their energy. These zones should be safe and filled with toys and scratching posts. It helps direct their energy into appropriate activities. Cats need to have outlets for their natural behaviors like scratching and climbing. By providing these spaces, you give them a place where they can be themselves without causing trouble. Let's make sure your cat has some calm retreats. Cats need a quiet, calm place to retreat to when they feel stressed or overstimulated. This could be a cozy bed in a quiet room or a high perch where they can observe without being disturbed. Think of it as their little sanctuary where they can chill out and relax. Cats often feel safer when they can get a bird's eye view of their surroundings. So providing a high perch can be really comforting for them. Now let's talk about some behavioral deterrence. One nifty trick is to use double-sided tape on furniture or areas you want to keep scratch free. Cats don't like sticky surfaces, so this can be a great way to deter them from scratching where they shouldn't. It's a simple and effective way to protect your furniture. Another option is cat repellents. There are cat safe sprays available that have scents cats don't like. Use these in areas you want your cat to avoid. Always choose products that are safe for your pet. These sprays can be particularly effective in keeping your cat away from certain spots without causing them any harm. Consistency and patience are absolutely essential. Cats thrive on routine, so establishing a consistent schedule for feeding, playtime, and training can help reduce stress and behavioral issues. Predictability makes them feel secure, and a secure cat is a happier, better behaved cat. Make sure you stick to the same times each day for their activities. Changing behavior takes time, so be patient and consistent with your training and preventive measures. Celebrate small victories along the way. If your cat goes a whole day without scratching the couch, give them a little treat. Positive reinforcement goes a long way in helping them learn what's acceptable. By following these tips, you'll be well on your way to managing and reducing your cat's aggressive behavior. They'll learn what's acceptable and feel more secure in their environment. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and smash that like button. Your support means a lot to us.